Have you ever looked at a miniature and said, that looks way too boring? Well, that's exactly what we're going to try to fix today. We're going to try to spice up our little plasma reactor and see how well we can do. And the first thing we need is a painted plasma reactor, which we'll do in a few quick steps, thanks to the Mighty Sponge. For this, I decided to use dark gray blue from Procrail, as I've had these paints for quite a few years, and I just never really got to use them much. Mixing in a tiny bit of black just to have a nice smooth layer question that always comes up, what kind of a sponge is it? It's called a synthetic art sponge. You don't have to use the exact same sponge as I do. I prefer this one as it has a specific texture and softness to it that I really enjoy. You can experiment and see which one fits your style. Here I got to work in momentum by grabbing a little bit of white from Liquitex and mixing it into my current mixture. Now, the big thing that's actually difficult in working with paints that dry extremely matte is you're not really certain about how they're going to dry. So in this case, I thought my paint was going on really, really bright and that I was like actually going to have an issue, but it ended up being not bright enough, so I had to mix in even more white to build up to the midtone I actually wanted, which in the end worked out really great for me because I had a really nice smooth transition between the colors. Then I tried dry brushing on some steel, but realized it wasn't really doing much, so I moved on to the next step. Now, I think the key to selling my OSL is going to be first to create a very diffused looking light, then create some of these hot points as if the light is getting essentially hit on the edge and getting really focused on there, as opposed to getting diffused across the entire surface. Having some deep red from AK Interactive and using one of these very strange dry brushes that I picked up. Luckily, after painting the eye, most of the paint on the brush was gone, so I was able to provide a very smooth transition for the rest of them. I wanted a very exaggerated oil cell effect, so I made sure to focus only on the left side of the, essentially, the skull, creating this very menacing effect of the left side being very light, brightly lit up, and the right side is being covered in the shrouders of darkness. For the actual effect of the oil cell, I always make sure that I'm covering only the top part, which is why dry brushing works very, very well for this effect. As whenever I look at oil cell, I feel like the shadows are actually the key thing of providing an effect of the item actually glowing, as you're able to see the very bright transitions between the contrast of dark and bright. Here I constantly added a tiny bit of white to my bright red to work up to a highlight, but I also realized I went a bit too far, so I went back in with my dry brushing to essentially filter in and create a much brighter effect. And then going back in again with a tiny bit of a pink dot. And the angry machine spirit of this plasma reactor was online. I'm not actually sure what to call these brushes. It's called something like, I don't know, ink brushes or something similar. It's definitely a very different synthetic fiber where it absorbs ink and paint very, very heavily. But it, there's also, they're extremely fine and there's a lot of them. So they produce a very smooth effect. I think the best way to describe them is if normal brushes are hair, these are eyelashes. <laughs> Moving on to the other side of the plasma reactor, for which I did the exact same steps, but just a more compressed version of dry brushing some red and then applying a few small pink dots. Here's where I initially wanted to actually go with an emerald glow to complement the red, but I re realized very quickly that the emerald wasn't actually working at all, and it was providing a very dull looking effect. So I wanted to go with frog green instead. And here in Photoshop, I wanted to provide a more clear visual as to what I'm actually gonna be doing with the sort of a lens effect. In the bottom, I list all the colors and ratios of how I got this result. And then finally coming in with a white dot at the top left to give this a very, you know, sort of a glass effect. This is definitely one of my favorite effects that I learned on very early on in painting, and I've been trying to use as much as I can, but it's something I often forget about. But it's an incredibly easy thing to do that'll give your models a really awesome effect. It's a great example where something from traditional 2D art is actually very good at being transitioned into 3D model. Now for this OSL effect, I'm also applying a lot of the green and basically doing the exact same gradient on the cables and the surface around the lens. As this is the main thing that will essentially, hopefully, create an idea of the lens essentially providing an outer glow. The only rule I'm trying to follow for this is to essentially create a sort of a centered dot in the center of my lens and then work my way outwards from there, trying my best not to go outside of it. This was also the part where I realized the lens was looking a bit too boring and I forgot to do my dry brushing of the actual OSL glowing effect. So I grabbed my dry brush and began providing that effect. This time I'm using only frog green on its own. Luckily, frog green from AK is a very transparent color, so doing this is very easy. When I moved on to the blue light, I did want to use this uh, essentially AK ultramarine color, but it was extremely desaturated. So I grabbed some Tessalar blue and essentially applied that as a contrast paint to give it a really nice saturated look. That'll match the rest of the model perfectly. And these thing brushes are awesome, but one massive problem with them. They stain and they keep some of the pigment in them. I haven't found a way to clean them. I tried soaking them in alcohol and water and nothing helps. They keep the color. So luckily they're extremely cheap. They're like less than a dollar. So I'll just have one for every single color of all the cell I do. You know, it is a solution. 
Continuing with some of those Telosar, I can never pronounce that name, let's just move on. <laughs> Grabbing some white and mixing it with it. And doing the exact same thing as green by providing all of these essentially hot points where the light is getting really concentrated. For the blue light, I also wanted to create this very concentrated aura. I saw this very expensive lamp that's like, I don't know, $2,000 or something that had this very black hole effect. It's literally called that. And I really wanted to replicate that on this light. Uh, it's technically a very different visual effect, but the idea is still the same, where the concentrated darkness is in the center, and then this really bright halo around the light that, honestly, I think looks really awesome. Well, now that the old cell is done, uh, the miniature does look kind of boring. I'm not sure why. Let's see if we can add enough stuff to make it more interesting. Now, for this project, I do destroy my dry brush. Well, I don't actually destroy it, but it does get damaged quite a bit. That's actually the main reason I like using disposable dry brushes. I don't have to care about them. They might survive another day, they might not. It's the magic of dollar store. Moving on to the metallics, for which I use bur AK Burn Tin plus Metal Color Gun Metal. And reading colors out loud is always very difficult. <laughs> I decided to go for these very warm colors as I felt like it would be a very good contrast to the, essentially the rest of the miniature, which was very blue. I then grabbed some Metacolor Chrome and mixed it with a mixture that I previously had on my brush. I forgot to use my dry brush palette, so when I started applying it, it was leaving me behind these really scratchy marks, which at first I thought I should probably get rid of, but then I realized this looks awesome. This is like extra weathering. It's essentially additional scratches, so I went along with it. Also, those cables were staring at me the entire time, and I had some red on my palette, so I just grabbed some and painted them red. I also tried diluting some black and provide some panel lighting, but that didn't do much, so I moved on. Grabbing some Burnt Umber, which is definitely my favorite weathering color, mainly because it always dries perfectly, you know, extremely matte, and it gives this very cool sort of a rust and a mud effect combined. I made sure my brush was very wet so that it would be leaving behind these very wide, streaky sort of like mark effects, and sometimes it would literally just be dragging my brush along. For the next step, I grabbed Scale 75 Mars Orange. It's a very cool paint that dries, once again, also extremely matte, giving a very bright, natural rust effect. Mixing it with some of this burnt umber was a perfect transition, as the colors were just coming together perfectly in this very rusty effect. The paint is also extremely pigment rich, so I was able to dilute it with a lot of paint and give a very smooth transition. Without even realizing, the blue of my model created this very interesting sort of a cold steel effect, and this very bright orange just complemented it perfectly. I continued sponging on a very wet layer of this paint. For the next effect, I grabbed a fresh sponge with a concentrated Mars orange on top of it and began applying these sort of fresh looking rust effects. But I also realized my paint was coming on a little bit too strong, so I diluted with a bit of water and created these much more filtered areas around the concentrated areas of rust, which I think made a much more natural looking effect. Then I grabbed a brush and used some of the diluted Mars orange to create these much more wet rust effects, as rust is usually caused by water. And the model was done. Disclaimer, I did actually lie. I do use an airbrush at the end for the top light, mainly because I wanted to see what the comparison between the two would actually look like. And I think the main thing I learned is that an airbrush is an excellent way to sketch some detail for your OSL, but you still got to do the hard work. Hey, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, dislike, all that stuff. Bye. I like looking them from far away and just enjoying them while they're on the shelf or something like that.